Hey, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from TheShrinkingPastor.com. Together, the three of us, we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Welcome back once again, and good morning, boy. Good morning, Homer. As we continue, <laughs> Tobacco Advent, our countdown hey. up to Christmas. Thank you for joining us yet again. So, um, today's video is by a, I'll say, semi-new YouTuber. Um, he, he came, he was here at one time, and then he went away, and he's back. So, Classic uh, story. This is from a gentleman named Rod, who on YouTube is known as Biscuit. So, Biscuit, what are we about to smoke? Hi, Scott. Hi, Seth. One of my least favorite tobaccos is by Lane Limited. It is buttered rum. Not sure if it's the rum in it or what. Just don't care for that flavor. Okay, buttered rum. Get this now. I... I I had this uh, with me at work in a, in a box, and one of my coworkers said, "Man, what smells so good?" Mm. And I reached into the box and I pulled this out and handed it to her, and she said, "Buttered bum, <laughs> buttered bum." <laughs> you got a little, so, well, got a little leg on your R there. So, Rod, thank you for sending us the buttered bum. <laughs> That's uh, that is actually my favorite uh, Christmas food. I thought that was that honey baked ham. That was your favorite band name. <laughs> I like that too. I like that too. Oh, buttered bum. No, buttered rum. Um, again, this is one of those tobaccos that we we smoked at one time. I don't know if it was Tobacco Advent or not, um, but I do remember that you love it or hate it. And my understanding is that most people do not care for it, and that's because it is it's it's a pretty distinct aromatic. Right. right. So. You know, not going to be any in-betweens on this. So thank you, Rod, for sending us this tobacco. Hey, also, uh, what's our question for the day? The question I have is, what is your favorite Christmas gift as an adult? As an adult, I would say my favorite would be getting together with my children, grandchildren, family for Christmas is always, to me, a blessing. But this year I uh, received a mini lathe from a little machine shop, and... Uh, that's been my favorite because I dabbled in making pipes, and that's, as an adult, that's my favorite Christmas gift. I don't know that I know what my favorite Christmas present was as an adult. Oh, I have mine. Go ahead. A couple Christmases ago, my daughter and her husband drag in this giant wooden crate mm. and set it in the middle of the living room. And after all the other gifts are open, they, my daughter says, oh, by the way, Dad, this is yours. There's, I don't think there was anything on it that indicated it was for me. And uh, so I open this, this big crate up, and there's nothing in it, except for at the very bottom there's an envelope, and it was two tickets to see Miranda Sings in concert. Um, I, I didn't know what to expect, although we had watched a number of Miranda Sings videos and had laughed at them um, and shared them together. And I know that my daughter struggles sometimes be, uh, connecting with me, right? Because she's not a woodworker and she's not interested in pipes, and you know, so so she feels a disconnect. But the one, two things really that we have in common is is musical interest and. She loves to laugh, and she especially loves it when she's able to trigger my laughter. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't matter to her whether she's the one that tells the joke or if she's the one that brought the person to the table to tell the joke. And uh, so for her, she wanted to see me enjoying my, myself. So she and I went to see that concert together, and it was really surprisingly good. If you don't know Miranda Sings, uh, just search for her here on YouTube. Crazy character. I bought you some time there, boy. Yeah, it didn't help, really. <laughs> um, I really don't know. Uh, I have a terrible memory, and um, this is one of those things that... that like I can remember some, some significant gifts I've received over the last few years, but I don't think any of them were, the ones I'm remembering were for Christmas. I, my wife bought me um, a couple of anniversary gifts. She got tickets to Garrison Keillor, which was amazing. Um, uh, and some other things. Last year, 
Last year we did a gift exchange with her side of the family and my now brother-in-law, uh, who I had the privilege of marrying earlier this year, um, <laughs> is uh, he got me a a drone, which was a fun fun gift, a fun toy. Um, yeah. You know, I guess I guess uh, this year um, my wife and I got each other a baby uh, yeah. around Christmas time. That's true. Um, Story was born a couple months ago. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't recall. I don't know. Keep, keep vamping. What's the deal? Is it, is that something that's just common to adults? Is that we, we, we just move on? I think. Well, you know, I think that I think in, in part it has to do with our love language, mm -hmm. right? So we've talked about this before um, in our show. How really no one in our family. Um, and in, on Allison's family, is really drawn towards gifts as a way of expressing. You disagree? Well, I just I want to make it very clear because Brother Boontar knows that one of my love languages is actually receiving gifts. Okay. It's not so much in giving. Okay. Number one right. for me, love language is, is spending time together with people. Right. And and that's time together, one on one or in a small group. Right. It's not but spending it's, time in a large group. Yeah, but it's not gifts. It's uh, what's the other one? There's uh, words of affirmation. There's gifts. There's words of affirmation. There's service, physical touch, and the other one. The gift of physical touch. Oh, uh, that's yeah. <laughs> uh, because because you have said before that for you, what stands out isn't necessarily the gift. And it's the thoughtfulness. It's a, and it, and and that it matters more to yeah. people that you wouldn't expect it from as well. That. I don't expect things from people, I, but I. But when it's a surprise, it's like if I remember your birthday. First of all, I'm probably getting you a crappy gift. But if I remember your birthday, it's not as meaningful as if someone who you wouldn't expect to remember your birthday remembers. Right. And not not that it doesn't have meaning when I remember, but it just it stands out more well, when it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, and, and part you of didn't it, have to. Part of it did. is. I wish that I were more thoughtful. Sure. And so when people are thoughtful, and I, and I mean, and, and, I'll, and I'll mention Boontar again, because right. Boontar has amazed me on a number of occasions. He's, he gave me, he bought for me, a Bic lighter with a pickle on it. A Bickle. Okay? I love that lighter. Right. He gave me, a year and a half ago, a Bic lighter with The Walking Dead on it. Nice. Okay? Um, he's he's given me some things that, you know, he picked up at a convenience store, but when he saw it, he went, oh, Mark would would like that. Right. You know, he thought of me. Or like, when he shows up in Chicago and right. brings us the potato chips that we were talking about right. that we'd never seen, and he wanted to share that with yeah. us. Super, super thoughtful guy, and I appreciate that. And again, you're right, it's not so much the gift. A Bic lighter, I can buy a Bic lighter. Right. But the fact that he, he thought enough and connected that with me is, uh, you know, I guess that really does tie into that that personal um, right. connection that I get from spending time together. Yeah, um, and, and you know, you, you mentioned thoughtfulness. It's not that you're not thoughtful. You're just not thoughtful in that way and, and where, you know, it might be more natural for you when you're thinking about someone to call them up and spend that quality time versus picking something up for them at the store and sending it their way. Um, you know, I get accused often in my family, uh, especially on my wife's side of the family, of being incredibly difficult to buy gifts for. And I laugh at that because I think I, I, I have to be the easiest person. But no, apparently I'm, I'm very challenging. I am uh, amused by and, and pleased with the most incredibly simple things. <laughs> Dollar store things, uh, yeah, yeah, are, are exciting to me. Stuff, any, anything that spam tried oh, yeah. and then pulled off the market, and you can find it at Big Lots. Oh yeah, but uh, <laughs> peanut butter flavored spam. Oh, Seth would love yeah. this. That, that, that Seth would delicious. Seth would love it if nothing else. They have a picture on Instagram yes, of it. That's right. <laughs> um, but uh, I have been accused. One of the things my wife accuses me of is she said, anytime that you are really passionate about something that. I could get as a gift. Uh, you go ahead and buy it yourself. <laughs> yeah, you beat her to it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah no. So I'll try to be better about that. You know, I got your mom something the other day. Yeah. This is going to sound so stupid and so insignificant, 
but my wife just doesn't ask for things. She's just not a person who thinks a lot about herself. Right. And somebody, I don't even know who, took her tweezers off of her keychain. And mm. she uses the exact same tweezers that I use here in the shop. They're fantastic tweezers. We're going to put a link to it in the description of this video. Um, I've been using them for 20 some years. She's had this on her keychain for at least 15 and it disappeared. And it didn't just, the tweezer didn't just disappear out of the holder. Someone took the holder off of her key ring. Uh -huh. So it was either somebody in the family or somebody who was changing her oil. Right? Or, or it could have fallen off. No, these can't fall off. They're, really? they're on, they were on a split spiral ring. But yeah. could the could the other ring? So I've had I've had like pocket knives fall yeah. off of keychains yeah. because they have a small yeah. ring that gets caught and pulled. That's not what do this that. is. It's a okay. little there's a little stainless steel thing that you attach okay. to your key ring grommet. that you then clip the the tweezers, tweezers into. into. Right. And the springiness of the tweezers is what holds them in. Right. So if, if the tweezers were gone and the little holder were still there, that oh they sense. fell out. Right. These things don't fall out. Right. And the part that was on the the ring is missing. I use them in my shop. I've been using them for years. They're fantastic. She mentioned that it was missing off of her key ring. I immediately went to Amazon and bought her two of them. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's because I'm prone to forgetting. I know well, that, and I I I never hear yeah. her say, "You know what I need." Yeah. I just so those are the things that yeah. you kind of listen for with people, and uh, yeah, I'm not so great about that, but I did this time. Woohoo! Tweezers from my wife for Christmas. Who? <laughs> yeah. So you know the the flip side of that for me is is uh, I am a quality time person. I remember more about the hanging out with people than about the gifts usually. Um, maybe it's because I I buy things that I really want for myself. Uh, but like I said, I remember some significant gifts. I just don't think they work for Christmas time. So. All right. So we're gonna wrap this up. What about you? What do you think of buttered rum? And how yeah. about you? You know what? This is around the time I also remember that there are people that sometimes post a video response mm -hmm. to Tobacco Advent. We've had that happen in the past. It's really cool. So if you're looking for a topic to talk about, how about you post a quick video each day this month um, answering the question? That'd be cool. It would be. If you do, put a link to that in the, in the description here so others can find it too uh, in the comments. All right. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Make a great day. See ya.